What if free people could live secure in the knowledge that their security did not rest upon the threat of instant U.S. retaliation to deter a Soviet attack, that we could intercept and destroy strategic ballistic missiles before they reached our own soil or that of our allies? Now we can engage a threat and maybe prevent that, that mad scenario, right, where the whole world's glowing. The soldiers of the 100th Missile Defense Brigade Director, MCS Supports Wick Alert. are the ground-based mid-course defense experts and provide the nation's safeguard from intercontinental ballistic missile attack. But the unit was born of humble beginnings. For many years, the United States recognized the need for a dynamic ballistic missile defense system. However, the idea of intercepting an enemy warhead in space predated the technology by decades. Following the attacks of September 11, 2001, the Bush administration withdrew from the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty. I have concluded the ABM Treaty hinders our government's ability to develop ways to protect our people from future terrorists or rogue state missile attacks. Later, in 2002, the White House issued National Security Presidential Directive 23, ordering the deployment of an initial limited homeland defense capability by 2004. And this year, for the first time, we are beginning to field a defense to protect this nation against ballistic missiles. President Reagan's Strategic Defense Initiative vision was realized, and the concept of a defense system to defeat enemy missiles outside of the Earth's atmosphere became a reality. On October 16, 2003, the Department of Defense activated the 100th Missile Defense Brigade, then known as the Colorado Army National Guard Missile Defense Brigade, under the flag of Space and Missile Defense Command. It began as a, um, a collection of people who really didn't know much about missile defense that were brought in from a, a number of different places and formed into a unit uh, that became the 100th Brigade. It was exciting. I mean, there was so much, so much mystery, so much unknown about, about this thing that people called GMD, right? And, and nobody, nobody knew what it was. Uh, everybody had their, their visions of the movie War Games. We are at DEFCON 1. Or, or Star Wars or something like that. Although the unit was activated, it took several months to become operational. The night before we went active, before we stood up for 24-7 operations, my crew was actually out, out at Schriever getting the node ready so that the follow-on crew that next morning as we started what now is our sustaining mission, right, making sure everything was in place and all the phones were ready and all the battle books were ready. Colonel Simpson's crew came in the night before and they did the checkout and then at 06 the next morning we came in and turned it on officially for the first time. It was exciting. Located in the heart of the Alaska interior, Fort Greeley was selected as the tactical site for the GMD system. Soldiers were needed to operate the system and guard the missile defense complex there, and so the 49th Missile Defense Battalion with the Alaska National Guard stood up in January 2004. A lot's changed since then. The missile field uh, has grown. When I started, we had Missile Field 1 and the, the Fire Team Ready Facility and where the MP headquarters that was the ECF, so it was actually a very small uh, footprint compared to what we see today. Fort Greeley uh, was an interesting place to begin with. Uh, it had been closed due to BRAC, and they brought it out of BRAC for missile defense. So when I arrived in the spring of 2003, what is now the missile defense complex was just a huge construction site. As Fort Greeley was restored, ground-based interceptors, the bullets of the GMD system, were emplaced there. The system and the soldiers were equipped and ready. The timing was opportune as North Korea launched a series of test missiles in July of 2006. One such missile, the Taepodong-2, featured an estimated range of nearly 6,000 miles. Although it failed shortly after launch, that test and a North Korean underground nuclear test that October set the tone for brigade operations for years to come. 24-7, uh, uh, 365 operations that were going on uh, by a couple of the elements became a norm for the entire brigade. The training got more rigorous. There was a lot that wasn't known, as I, as I said earlier, about the system, the program, as we first came in. And so a lot of us, I think both on, on the instructor side to, to an extent, on the, on the evaluator side to an extent, and the operators themselves were all kind of learning together as we went through on some of these things. As the unit matured and the soldiers refined their tactics, techniques, and procedures, the system also developed and became more advanced. 
The brigade is ever evolving. It was at the time we, were, we had uh, spiral development, unlike where you have a, a weapon system that comes in and it takes months or years to develop and test and prototype and finally field. We were fielding and updating software and equipment on a fairly constant basis, and that was in concert with our partners at the MDA, the Missile Defense Agency. The system in place today is the product of countless hours of research, development, and evaluation. This includes several missile flight tests, which have demonstrated increasing success. As we've had an up and down test record over the years, the system we're fighting today is the result of learning and growth from those tests. Yeah, this is a very complicated weapon system. One of the most complicated things we've ever done as a nation is missile defense. So you, you expect some failures. That's how science works, right? You fail and then you, you fix it and you make it better. On May 30th, 2017, a 100th missile defense crew launched an interceptor out of Vandenberg Air Force Base that collided with and destroyed its target, which was launched from the Marshall Islands nearly 5,000 miles away. Dubbed FTG-15, this test was the first successful exo-atmospheric intercept of an intercontinental ballistic missile class target in human history. The success we saw in FTG-15 was really impactful for our crews to be able to say, yeah, hey, uh, this system works. The system works against the threat it was intended to fight. That threat was on display throughout 2017 as North Korea conducted another underground nuclear test and launched a number of long-range missiles that were deemed capable of hitting the United States mainland. The term ICBM became globally recognized. North Korea tested another intercontinental ballistic missile. An ICBM? No, ICBM. ICBM. ICBM, that's an intercontinental ballistic missile. First of all, as those heightened tensions happened, I was jealous because I wanted to be back here, okay? I, this is where you want to be when, when something like that's going on in the world. At any moment, you could have been on that crew that had to launch a GBI. At any moment, any crew can be on that's when right. something happens. That's why we train to the level of what we do. We're always training. We train to an expert level. Knowing the soldiers that we had here, knowing the leadership team that we have here, the soldiers at Fort Greeley and Vandenberg and at our debts around the world had absolute confidence we were going to be able to deal with whatever challenge came our way. The 100th Missile Defense Brigade is perhaps the most unique unit in the United States military, as it is the only missile defense brigade in the Department of Defense. Also, because it's mainly comprised of National Guard soldiers who are deployed in place and fighting an enemy threat from abroad. On, on one of my end tables at home, I've got that, the National Guard statue, right, that you get when you retire. And it's the minute man with his hand on a plow and a musket in his other hand. And I kind of look at GMD the same way, right? We're guarding the homeland. I transitioned to guard when a position came available because it really resonated with me. I'm actually defending my homeland. I'm defending my family. I'm defending my friends. Some goodness of the guard is that we've got folks that have been doing this mission on and off for years and years. Uh, we build incredible levels of expertise. There is an art to the system, and you, unless you know the nuances and you've worked on it for a long time, um, you won't get to that really detailed art piece of the system, and we got guys that understand the art of it. Is, is it the likely course of action that we, that we have to uh, launch a, an interceptor? Probably not. But on America's worst day, right, where, where something goes wrong in the world and America's threatened, uh, we've got to be ready, right? It's been said that, that our adversaries only have to get it right one time uh, to create something catastrophic. Well, we've got to make sure we get it right every single time. The soldiers of the 100th Missile Defense Brigade have helped revolutionize homeland missile defense for the last 15 years. But what does the future hold? And we'll have to continue to outpace the threats. And, and I think, that, you know, the brigade knows that, that it's an extremely important role that they play in the security of this nation. And I've always said, this is our diamond. This is the diamond of the military department of defense, and, and we should always view it as that. I always like to call it a family because I look at this brigade as my family, as kind of my second home. I hope that endures. I hope it, it lives on and, and continues to be the case. It's, it's a great place to serve here in the 100th. Uh, so, yeah. It, a lot of pride in it, a lot of family, uh, and just some emotions when, it, when I think about what a great time I had serving here and the great people I had the chance to serve with.